Good morning and welcome to the core connection. I'm navigating a little bit of a of an emergency, not a horrible thing, but um, just as I was about to go live, I knocked over a glass of water that is all over my desk and my floor. And so I need to mop it up and I didn't want to be any later than I am. So you get to be here with me while I uh, navigate this unexpected turn of events. So um, <laughs> sorry for the distraction. Life, life, uh, what is it? Life um, intrudes. <laughs> Anyway, welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm Mira Rubin. This is the Core Connection. Um, and today's topic is generating and looking at how we um, bring something from nothing, how we create emotions. Actually, the topic of generating came forth from my thinking about. Uh, generosity because of the word generate in generosity and the feeling that we generate um, the feeling of generosity that we create is something that generates more energy and that kind of expands at least that's my experience of it good morning good morning Roslyn welcome it's great to have you here with us this morning and everybody else who's joining us and so um, before we get started talking about generating, let's take a minute or two to get present. So let's take a deep breath in through your nose and hold it. And imagine clean, crisp oxygen flooding your lungs, flowing into your bloodstream, nourishing all your cells, all your organs, bringing vital life energy to your body and being. And as you exhale, exhale any tension, stress, negativity, fatigue. And now let's take another deep breath in through your nose and hold it. This time, imagine brilliant bright light lighting you up from the inside out, illuminating, electrifying, and energizing all your cells, your molecules, your electrons, creating a brilliant beam of light and energy from your heart out into the world. And as you exhale, exhale any tension, any remaining stress, negativity, fatigue. And now let's press our palms together and vigorously rub those hands together to feel the friction, the temperature, the pressure. And when you stop all that tickling and tingling that just brings the experience of life so that we can really be present in these remarkable physical forms that enable us to experience life. So welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, crisis averted. Thankfully, it was just water, which is awesome. And it didn't go on my computer, which is also awesome. So um, anyway, uh, generating. So as I said, the topic of generating came from a thought of the word generosity. And I looked up generate and it, and it talks about bringing forth an experience, particularly with emotion. Good morning, good morning, Jenny. Welcome, it's great to have you here with us this morning. We're talking about generating. And um, that, that topic emerged from a thought about generosity. And um, I, I don't think that there's an accident. I mean, I don't, in, in the word generosity, I, it, we, we think of it as giving and sharing and um, being open-hearted. Um, and if we, if we think, you know what, I haven't, I didn't look up the word generosity. I looked up generate. So let me see about generosity uh, because there might be some insight for us there. Um, isn't it amazing the words we use 
on a regular basis often have meanings that we didn't that we weren't aware of so um generosity is readiness or liberality in giving freedom from meanness or smallness of mind or character largeness or fullness amplitude so um nothing about the word generate which is not surprising um however uh i think i think we get to look at that because I know that when, when I allow myself to be generous of spirit, I'm generating a state, you know, where, where I have an openness of heart or a, um, a connection, a level of connection with others. Um, that I might not otherwise have. And we can generate that state of generosity from nothing. And so what I was thinking of um, after moving from generosity to generate, I was thinking, well, what good morning, good morning, Robin. So good to have you here with us. It's been a while. Uh, we're talking about generating and regenerating and um, looking at where that comes from. So is it is is the process of generating, does it originate in a thought? And um, then some kind of action or some kind of engagement then occurs as a result of the thought, some kind of action brings that thought into fruition? Or um, does it start with an impulse even before the thought? Which is a really interesting idea because then, you know, like where does that impulse come from? Because I, I do think that there are experiences that we have that are not necessarily precipitated by by thought um, that that those maybe the thoughts the ideas the um awareness can come first and then get formulated as a thought so i'm calling that an impulse. I'm wondering if you've had an experience of that, where um, there's there's some sense about something, and it's not really formed as a thought yet. Um, so, I'm I'm wondering what what does it look like what's the process of bringing forward our um is it our will is it an expression of life what what is this notion of generating that you know like where does it come from i think it's an interesting question because so much of our lives are driven by habit and pattern and and um, programming, so to speak. So Jenny says, my daughter was generous enough to video call me to talk to my grandsons and showed me their new toys and stuff. It was nice, 45 minutes with them. See, Jenny, things, things can, it, ah, I love that. Jenny says, a satisfying life. So here's the thing. I mean, the other day uh, you were bereft because she refused to agree. And now she agreed. And that I think that was probably unexpected, right? And so maybe there was a shift in you that allowed her space to be how she is. I don't know. But perhaps in allowing 
you know, giving yourself more love, more attention, generating that for yourself, perhaps that shifted the whole energetic field of things and freed her up to be more generous. So um, maybe our generating creates generosity. So Rosalind feels creating feels related to generating, causing an effect. Yes, absolutely. And Robin says numerous sources. Jenny said, I zapped out and woke up to her call. So some, some way and shape or form, Jenny, I say you let go and gave her space to show up, you know, that, um, and so this, I agree, Rosalind, that creating and generating are related. And I'm wondering, I mean, that's another great question too, is where does the impulse for creation come from? You know, like when when we're driven to create something, to write something or to uh, paint something, to create something artistic, where is that coming from? This this notion of generating. And um, Jenny says, I didn't have any expectations. Well, but in releasing expectations, we create space, which is a beautiful thing. And um, so just looking at this notion of generating, and I, I, it would be great if um, I, I would love to hear from everybody in relation to the topic that we're discussing. So um, as we talk about generating, I would love to hear your experiences. I would love to hear um, what your awareness is around it and, and what your perspective is on it. And as you were um, saying, Rosalind, causing an effect. And, and I think maybe, maybe even more than causing an effect, it's um, causing a condition or causing the, um, the environment or opportunity maybe for an effect even. So um, to Jenny's point, uh, having no expectations, maybe that was generating a, a different state of mind rather than a state of disappointment or despair to create a state, to generate a state of no expectation. And then that creates an opening for something else to emerge. So um, generating can be the act of creation itself. It can, and, and maybe it is creating, um, a space, uh, a field, perhaps, you know, because when we when we connect, for instance, to generosity, and I, I do, I'm as I'm saying that word generosity, I'm still hearing about generate, you know, so generosity, what are we doing? We're generating some kind of connection, some kind of uh, openness, uh, giving, and causing an effect, perhaps, you know, even just gener generosity of spirit. And Jenny says, generating a satisfying life versus a happy life. You know, I think a satisfy. I, I like that. I like that a lot. Um, I don't know too many people that have what they would call a happy life, but they may have a satisfying life. And um, Robin says, higher self, spirit guides, angels, lords, divine will. And, and so maybe that's, maybe that's the source of some of these impulses. You know, some of the, the, um, the, the thought before the thought, maybe they get, maybe it's part of our guidance um, that arises, that allows us then to follow that, that path. Uh, it reminds me, or this part of our conversation reminds me of a conversation I had with a client 
who uh, was talking about how in the course of meditation, what came up were feelings of sadness. And um, Robin says, connections that are along your journey. So this, along the idea of those connections, this person was talking about sadness that arose in the context of the meditation that they were doing. And um, they, they said, I, I, wanted, I tried to get rid of the sadness and, you know, I was able to get rid of the sadness by doing, um, you know, putting, putting myself in this other state of mind, thinking about, um, you know, creating a, um, a fantasy. And I said, well, it may be that those, those emotions, that sadness arose to be healed. That's one of my hypotheses that I work with is that um, our emotions or our circumstances arise so to give us because we're ready to heal them. And we may or may not rise to that opportunity, but that's the um, dynamic behind their their showing up and um, that perspective comes from another one of my hypotheses that I live by, which is life is happening for me and through me rather than to me. Jenny says meeting, um, meet, meeting needs, not wants for a satisfying life. Well, there can be happiness in that too which is pretty awesome, right? And Roslyn says, creating is the throat chakra and the complement to creating is the storyteller chakra or solar plexus. You know, I haven't heard that association. That's pretty interesting. Thank you for that. Um, so when, when we think about generating what we were talking about is where is the source? Where does something come from that's being generated? Is it a thought? And if it's a thought, where does that thought come from? Is there an imp impulse prior to the thought that seeds that thought? You know, have you ever had like this, this feeling that there's a knowing or there's an understanding or something that wants to be brought forward and you get to just sort of be with that and and um and it it makes itself known and that goes back to well maybe it, where is it coming from is it coming from ourselves our higher self guides angels whatever um is it in the air the energy of it is it something like are we being receivers rather than generators which is an interesting idea um Jenny says, motivation meet goals. Well, you know, so interesting. I We're going to be talking, not today, but soon, uh, because the new year is coming up. We're going to be talking about resolutions and goals. And um, Robin says, manifestation. Yeah, so intention, generating. It, I, I think that we get to generate the field that supports whatever it is we're looking to manifest. And that's a big, that's a big part of the manifesting protocol in big air quotes is to have the experience of having whatever it is you're looking to manifest, to have the emotional presence to it, to be creating the field of it's already existing so that then it, it magnetizes to that field. And um, when we're talking about generating, it, it, the more I'm thinking about it, the more it feels true that, and that doesn't mean it is true, but it feels true that um, we are we are creating a field for something to 
emerge. And um, I think that we do this all the time, whether it's through thought, but maybe even more powerfully through emotion. And so if we can presence ourselves to things, emotions like generosity, generosity is one of these emotions that expands, right? It opens the heart, it or or it's representative of an open heart. Um, what comes to mind for me is beauty. Beauty is my my most effective inroad into feeling that sense of open heartedness and connection. And so, generating that experience, generating that shift of being. So Jenny says, generating is a process and intentions. Exactly. Exactly. So we're talking about manifesting and recognizing the process of generation so that we can do it consciously and deliberately. So that it's not something that just happens, but that it's something that we can call forth where um, we can generate a new experience. We can generate a different state of mind. We can generate a different set of emotions. We can um, generate circumstances or the field that then creates a shift of potential. And by, by presencing ourselves to this awareness around generation, we can, we can be active participants in it rather than everything just happening, you know, happening for us. Life happens, I say, I choose, that life happens for me and through me rather than to me. So, um, you know, it's interesting. I, I started out today's session um, cleaning up some a whole a whole glass of water that had spilled, and you know, it's interesting to me the way that the universe winks at us. Um, and I consider this this water spill a wink, and I'm not sure what the message is yet, but um, it, it has not escaped my attention that um, last night I failed to close the spigot on my um, water filter uh, fully and it leaked and it leaked quite a lot of water. Um, I have to move my standing desk a little to get water underneath it. Um, but anyway, it leaked quite a lot of water that I ended up cleaning up last night. And then this water glass filling this morning and um, water is very indicative of emotion. But it's also interesting that yesterday I had a conversation with someone about water being the connector to all of life on the planet. And so there's something going on around water for me. And um, maybe I'm just generating a story, but it's almost like the emergence of whatever this mess if there's a message i had a friend years ago who would say everything is symbolic and nothing is symbolic so you know maybe i just was have been spilling water and maybe there is some deeper awareness that is available for me in presencing myself to that wink i'm calling it a wink from the universe because there are three instances of water being a prominent um, part of a prominent 
conversation or awareness. So Rosalind says, if creating is an intrinsic value of human beings, the energy behind it is propelled forward by the story associated that we assign to it. Yes. So um, one of the things I, I believe that humans are meaning making machines. So we're creating meaning, we're generating meaning, meaning and um Jenny says, yes, meditation and visualization are helpful. So um, the stories we assign to things are going to shape our experience 100%. And so that's another reason why I, I caution people to be very discerning about how you curate your stories. So I'm going. I'm looking for a story around water that um, over the past couple of days that is empowering. You know, a story that that furthers my intention and serves my highest good, right? So I just noticed the time, and I have to run. So this has been. The Core Connection, I'm Mira Rubin, and I go live here each weekday morning on the Enlightened World Network Facebook page and YouTube channel at 9 a.m. Eastern. And uh, Jenny said, I used to write good intentions on my water bottles. Well, programming water is a big thing. We can talk about that, too, um, uh, which I love that topic. Anyway, please check out the other awesome programming on Enlightened World Network, EWN, One with the Earth earth and enlightened world living and um Rosson says whereas desire is complementary to one's vision yes alignment that's the ticket anyway i look forward to these mornings with you and i so appreciate your engagement and until next time so 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 much love